This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Chapter 4 is the first of five chapters that focus on the unincorporated trader. What we've seen so far is that for the unincorporated trader, on an income tax computation for a tax year, we'll see a trading profit assessment. But there are a number of problems that have to be dealt with in getting that assessment onto that particular tax year's income tax computation. Those problems are firstly dealt with here in Chapter 4 in terms of making the accounting profit the basis of establishing what profit on the business is to be charged to tax, making the accounting profit acceptable for taxation purposes. As we'll discover in the second section here, within chapter four, the vast majority of the work that you do here in this chapter is based on this second section, adjustment of profits, and will always feature in every examination that any students will do. It's a fundamental issue so far as our syllabus is concerned. The only thing I can't tell you is whether the type of adjustment of profits you'll be dealing with is as we deal here within chapter four, dealing with an unincorporated trader. So we have a sole trader business, we have a partnership, we prepare our statement of profit or loss, and then for taxation purposes, we pick up the bottom line on that statement of profit or loss, the net profit as per the accounts, and then adjust it to make it acceptable for taxation purposes. Now, we'll see later, we mentioned the existence of this, of course, in our introduction to this subject, but later in our studies, we'll be looking at corporation tax, where again, where do we think companies derive most of, if not the entirety of their profits from? It's from trading. So again, we'll face an issue. How do we take what is the accounting profit on the company's statement of profit or loss and make it acceptable for taxation purposes? We'll discover that the vast majority of the rules that we'll learn here in chapter four are equally applicable to companies. There's just certain issues that don't exist for corporate tax adjustment of profits that do exist here. Now, in relation to that adjustment of profit process, it's been a standard process that has repeated itself, well, since time immemorial there. And all that's happened since last year, the Finance Act 2017 round of lectures, to this year, our Finance Act 2018, is one small adjustment within the area of adjustment of profits. So rather than re-recording the entire uh, lectures on this entire chapter, I'm just now going to point out to you the one difference that has occurred. You'll then go through to, this will lead into, the uh, lectures from last year on Chapter 4 that are equally valid. The only thing that's changed is one small technical point that I will deal with you in a moment's time, in adjustment of profits. The rest of it is the same, other than with the example, well, in the notes that you'll be looking at for Finance Act of 18, that we've got a, a different year for the accounting period that needs to be adjusted. But all of the principles are exactly the same. So this will lead on to the lectures, as I say, taken from Finance Act 2017. The only adjustment you need to be aware of, if I take you back to this, here on what is uh, what is uh, one of the pages in our notes. This version doesn't need to have page numbers on. But uh, about the third side through, you come to a list of issues. This is note I, read the uh, adjustment of profits exercise. And what we've got is an adjustment in relation to leased cars whereby the least higher charge that's been debited on the statement of profit or loss will not all be allowable if we're dealing with what we may refer to as a high emission car. Well, what has happened over years, and you'll see it in the next set of lectures on Chapter 5, indeed, Capital Allowances, that the tax tra uh, taxation treatment, RECARS, has got progressively tighter and uh, therefore more tax to pay on lower and lower emission cars. These levels by which the lower the emission, the lower the tax charge, the better the taxation treatment. Those CO2 emission levels have dropped in recent years. So you've got to get ever more efficient cars 
to benefit within the taxation system. And what this note tells you is, and is still true, that when dealing with these high emission cars, we're going to disallow an amount of 15% of the leasing charges. So whatever's been debited for the charge within the accounting period, we're going to add back in our adjustment to profit. We're going to disallow the process, as I say, we'll be seeing in those lectures in a moment's time. We're going to disallow 15%. The only thing that has changed from the lecture that you're about to see, or the lectures you're about to see, is that the definition in terms of these higher emission cars has been brought down to 110 grams per kilometre. When dealing with this in last year's lectures, the level was 130 grams per kilometre. Now, you will have to be aware as we go through, and I'm pointing out to you now, that the lease rental on cars with CO2 emissions exceeding 110 grams per kilometre, that is where we add back 15% of the lease hire charge. If the CO2 emissions for the car do not exceed that figure, then there is no add back. The whole lease hire charge is allowable and no adjustment of profit will be required of you. So, in which case, that said, I'll uh, now leave you to, uh, dare I say, enjoy the uh, next couple of lectures dealing with this chapter. I say a most important area whereby we're going to learn by taking what is an accounting profit, net profit, the, bait, uh, the bottom of, get right a moment, the bottom of the statement of profit or loss, and make it acceptable for taxation purposes. Now, when you are adjusting a figure, a profit figure, there's either there's two ways you can go. You can either increase by adding back an expense that was debited in deriving the accounting profit that the taxation rules say, no, that is not allowable. Or as we've seen here, some part of that charge is not allowable. Therefore, we must increase the accounting profit to make it acceptable for taxation purposes. That is an add back. Or sometimes on the statement of profit or loss, there will be credits that although some may be taxable, they're not taxable as trading income. So as our exercise here is not to work out what is the taxable income figure on the income tax computation. This exercise is about establishing one figure to go into that income tax computation. It is, of course, there to calculate the adjusted trading profit. So if there are sources of income credited on the statement of profit or loss, that are not trading sources of income, then they're going to be deducted in the adjustment of profit process. So what we see is a process of pluses and minuses. And apart from this one issue here that I keep arrowing, there are no differences in terms of what happened last year to what has happened this year. So work through that. As I say, very important exercise. This is the stuff you need to learn how to do. This is a learning exercise that manifests itself then in a doing exercise that you need to get a grip on early in your studies. So check through that and enjoy the uh, two lectures on adjustment of profits. And on that uh, first issue here, something called, if we can just go back to it, badges of trade. All that is how do we define what is income and therefore assessable as trading profits? And how do we maybe establish a capital gain, a profit made on the disposal of a capital asset that should be treated as capital gains tax uh, in, in the capital gains tax area rather than an income tax? Over to you. Uh, again, I'll uh, see you next on those, well, <laughs> a year ago, as it were, I'll see you then. Hopefully the uh, year has been kind to me. You can make that judgment. And uh, I'll see you again in more recent times for Chapter 5, where we'll look at an add-on in relation to what has happened in adjustment of profits, and then proceed through Chapters 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, all of which deal with the establishment of the correct tax-adjusted trading profit to feature on the relevant tax year, income tax year of assessment, the income tax computation and also to deal with issues such as what happens if a business makes a loss rather than a profit, how do we deal with it? And what happens if the business, the profit doesn't belong to one person, a sole trader, it belongs to two or more, a partnership. All of that in the coming lectures.